Hey, good evening, guys. This is Nathan Pennington from RunDreamAchieve.com, and today's video, I just want to just want to uh, cover a question that one of the uh, athletes that I'm consulting with had asked me about, and he said, uh, "How do you know when? How do you know when you're ready to race? I mean, when you when you're 100 percent certain that you can, you know, get, go out there and really go after uh, a specific time. You know, th this this gentleman's trying to break three hours for the marathon." And uh, right now he's currently uh, has a PR of three three hours and thirty five minutes, which is outstanding. He's uh, he's definitely on on par to, to get under the three hour marathon, marathon barrier. But he's got to do some serious uh, make some serious changes in his training, which we're implementing. Um, he's invested in the the sub three hour marathon pro course that I have on RunDreamAchieve.com, uh, which basically is a is a step by step process of how to get athletes who are currently sub four hour marathoners to break the three hour marathon and I really thought that that question that he asked was really uh, really important because uh, you, you're not really going to know 100% certain if you're uh, fully prepared to to go after a, a specific race time unless you've done obviously you've done your homework and, and training and uh, it's not something that that you know, immediately happens. There's physiological adaptations that occur with with your training, uh, and it takes time. Uh, you know, when you know when I was trying to break two hours and 22 minutes for the marathon, uh, you know, I it, it a lot of my race results, some of my race results didn't really always show that I could do it. Um, but over the long term, over months and months and months of training, um, I was able to one notice the the difference in my my workouts my tempo runs uh the splits i was hitting for my repeat miles my repeat k's uh repeat two miles on the track uh those those kind of gave me the indication that in the long term as i was as i was racing and getting faster uh that i was able to do it i definitely knew i could break that specific time barrier when i ran 10706 in philadelphia um it was an extremely uh, aggressive, tough race. I was 20, I believe I finished 24th place with that time. And <clears throat> I set a specific, uh, a, a number of personal bests. I remember, uh, hitting 5k in 1458. I hit, uh, 10 miles in 50, 54, and then I uh, ended up running 107 of six. Um, but you, you have to have, obviously you have to be doing the specific types of training um, you know, in your, in your weekly training, uh, workouts, uh, to, to get to a point where, you know, when you're, when you're confident and you, you're a hundred percent certain that you can break your, your specific marathon, or if it's a 5k, 10k half marathon, um, goal that you have in mind. Um, you know, obviously I talk a lot about goal race pace, so you have to continually practice that you have to practice, not just running at goal race pace, but far below it. That's, that comes into play when you're doing, you know, uh, repeat 200s, repeat 300s, repeat 400s. Uh, you're doing hill uh, sprints, sprinting up the hills, coming and then jogging back down, sprinting up the hills, jogging back down. You, those anaerobic type types of workouts are what's going to lead you to um, that. It's going to lead you to that point where you, you're certain that you can break uh, your, your, race goal, whatever that may be. Um, obviously, uh, taking, taking, you know, either replacing a, a hard workout with a race. Um, I'm all for that. You know, I, and I did mention that to, um, to this gentleman that's, that I'm working with right now that I said, Hey, you know, if you look at the training schedule, if there's a, like a weekend, hard, long run that you have planned, uh, replace that with maybe a 10 mile race or a half marathon effort and get out there and practice running, you know, at, at least 13.1 miles, get, get out there and run 10 to 13.1 miles at race pace and see how that feels. And if you can get to that point where you're running, um, you know, a, a longer amount of time at your goal race pace and it's starting to feel comfortable and it's not feeling uh, so taxed and, and stressed, then you're going to be you're going to be a lot more confident and you're going to have that indication like, you know what, I can definitely go out there and I can do this. Uh, you know, in this guy's case, you know, you know, sub three hours for the marathon is 652 per mile. So uh, the key is really uh, spending 
a lot of time at you know six minute pace, uh, five fifty pace, uh, or faster. Uh, and it's also a mixture of a lot of other workouts. It's it's a mixture of doing workouts, you know, long runs at you know ten seconds below goal race pace or like ten seconds above race pace, uh, and then mixing up, varying up the the types of um, uh, the types of pace in the long run as well. So. You know, when it when it comes to that point where you're you're asking a question, how do I know when I'm ready? The, the kind of the simplest answer I can I can give anybody is you're going to know when you're ready, and it's not going to you're not going to feel that way in the first few weeks of your training block. Uh, it, it just doesn't. Um, you know, n- none of us, n- no matter if you're a lead athlete or you're a beginner, you're an advanced level athlete. Uh, nobody just kind of walks into a, a training. Uh, a training routine and just automatically says, yeah, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to crush it. Um, you know, you, you'll have a rude awakening if you, if you go out there and you try to run, you know, if you're trying to run a specific, like a half marathon in, you know, under 115 and you go out the first three or four miles, you know, uh, 30 seconds faster than your, your goal race pace. And you haven't even spent, you know, at least, at least eight weeks, eight weeks to 12 weeks practicing that pace, you're going to pay the price. So really, uh, when it comes down to it is you have to do your homework in training and you have to, um, make sure that you're, you're challenging the, the anaerobic systems of the body in training and really focus also have that same type of discipline that you have on the, the really aggressive type workouts, have that same type of discipline on the easy days when you know you have to jog, you know you have to relax and and back off your pace. Um, That is really critical because the results are always going to come in the rest. And if you're running hard every single day, you're not going to get the, uh, the best benefits and you're not going to, you're not going to get to that point where you're at that optimal fitness level where you can go out there and you have that confidence. Like I'm, I'm a hundred percent certain I can go out there and I can do it because I've done it in training. Um, and now, you know, I've, I've built my volume up and I've, I've, you know, trained at and below goal race pace. I've practiced, you know, doing the track workouts, the, the, the long, hard tempo runs. And I've done the, I've done my, my, my homework and training first. So I have that confidence, but you know, you're, you're going to know one by practicing, uh, getting out there and racing, obviously getting out there and get, getting tested by, you know, other athletes is going to give you an indication of where you stand and don't get this, you know, don't get, uh, don't start to doubt yourself or, um, get upset if, if you, if you can't sustain the pace early on, because it's normal to feel like that. It's normal. It takes time for the body to, to adapt to the, the types of stresses that you're putting, putting the body under anyways, during, during the initial phases of your training block. Um, I didn't, I didn't break two hours and 20 minutes in the marathon overnight. I had several attempts at it. Um, I had a lot of other races like from, uh, 10 K, uh, 10 K, 20 K, 10 mile races, half marathon races where I had to uh, gradually over time build myself into that type of fitness where I could actually go out and and really do that. And, you know, as I talk about in the course, uh, there's, you know, obviously holding 519 mile pace for 26.2 miles. I mean, even right now, it's, it's, it, it just everything came together. I was doing really good workouts. I was spending um, a lot of time doing track workouts at you know well under sub five minute mile pace, doing um, repeat two miles under ten flat each at at 6,500 elevate 6,500 feet elevation. All those uh, added up to a point where obviously that I could go out there and I could do it. But I was also training with some really great athletes. And I was putting myself out there in races where I was willing to get my, you know, I was willing to get dusted if I had to. And that's the name of the game. You have to get out there with the competition and get out there with people that are better than you and, um, you know, ex- expect to, to take your hits. And, and, but also you're going to, you're going to be a lot more confident. You're going to be really excited to get to a point where you, you know, if, if you have a specific time goal, say for, for a 10K, and you can go out there and you can hold a 5K uh, 20 seconds faster than you're wanting to run for a 10K, then that's kind of going to give you an indication of what you can really do. Um, you know, if, if you're if you're, you're in this this uh, the same case as the gentleman I'm, I'm talking about, uh, and you can go out and you can run a half marathon and say, um, 
uh, 125, 125 to 126, 127. That's gonna sh that's gonna kind of also tell you, um, you you have a very high likelihood of getting uh, under three hours as well. Especially if if you can run 13 miles at or below uh, three hour marathon pace, then uh, that tells me that you can do it for 26. It's just a matter of really um, being extremely extremely patient with yourself and just continuing to stay persistent in training and allowing your body to to adapt to what you're what you're putting it under and really the key the key overall is just to be really patient with yourself um, stay consistent and like I said get out there and, and race with people that are better than you I've been humbled several times in races and in training and um, you know you know after I broke 220 I spent really a decade trying to break 219.35. I'm, I'm, I'm 42 now, and I still, in my mind, I can see myself breaking that time, but it's an extremely, you know, as you already know, the faster you run, the harder it is to duplicate those types of efforts. And, um, you know, those kind of, uh, those, what do you call it, the, the flow type states where just everything is, is you've tapered correctly, you've, you've perfected your taper, you go into a race and you feel relaxed you're not stressed you're not you're looking around and everybody else is all tight and, and stressed out and you can just relax because one you you know that you've put all the work in training you've made training the most difficult part of the process and you know that the race is really kind of like the the easy part because you've done everything you challenge yourself uh you know to to the upteenth extent you know in, in training and you've done everything in training so you know you're going to go in the race and you're going to be confident so really the answer to, to his question, um, and he knows who he is, so I'm sure he's watching this, is, uh, you, you know, like I said, you're going to know when you're ready based on the workouts you're doing and based on getting out there and, and being willing to, uh, you know, being willing to get beat. But if you get beat and you run up to your standard and you say, it, you know, even if you set a PR and you, and you just get dusted, that's a step in the right direction, you know, because I've had a lot of those days too where, you know, I was in phenomenal shape and I was just in some, you know, I was racing against some, some horses out there and, you know, like I said, uh, Philadelphia is an example. Uh, I ran 107 of six and I think the guy that won it ran like 101, 25, something around there. Uh, I think I was the third or fourth American in the race and the rest, you know, it's just a slew of uh, Kenyans, Europeans, um, you know, a, lo a lot of great Americans, obviously. Uh, but yeah, that's the way it goes, you know. It's, just get out there, put in the work, stay consistent with what you're doing, believe in yourself, and expect that, uh, it, you know, anyone who stays consistent and who just really narrows in their focus on going after a goal is going to get it. It's just the question is, how long you're willing to persist? Because a lot of people will give up after so many tries, and then they'll say, you know, I gave it my best shot, and maybe they did. Um, but sometimes... Uh, these goals that we have might take, especially when it comes to running. I mean, you know, sometimes it might take a year, might take five years, might take a decade. Um, it's just really going to be a matter of how, how badly you really want to do it. But you're going to know, like I said, you're really going to know when you're ready, when, when you, when it comes down to doing the proper training and then you, you get to that taper phase where you start dropping your volume. Uh, you, you lessen the intensity uh, especially, I'm talking about like the last 10 days of the race, uh, or 10 days uh, prior to the big race, where you've you've tapered your body and you've done all the work, and now your body goes, it becomes, you know, it becomes in a, and it gets in a rested state, and then you you're you just stay focused and you go into the race confident. So, hope this video has been helpful in regards to to answering that question, and uh, feel free to to leave a comment below. If you haven't yet, definitely please feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel and then click the, 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 there's like a bell icon as well. That way, anytime I make a new video, it'll go directly into your, your inbox. Uh, you know, it'll give you a, YouTube will send you a, a notification regarding that. If you're trying to break uh, the four hour marathon or three hour marathon, definitely check out rundreamachieve.com and then click on uh, courses, the courses tab. And uh, that'll give you, you can go to the pages where it give you some more information about what I'm doing in regards to that. I want to definitely help people, uh, athletes that are, uh, regardless where you are in the world, I want to get you under the four-hour marathon or the three-hour marathon. 
uh, if you're you're focused on a 26.2 mile event. And I'm going to continue to build uh, products that add value to athletes that I'm coaching online. And I really want to see more people around the world, um, and not just running. I mean, I have uh, I have a lot of interest outside of running as well. Uh, but I really think the the importance of mindset and motivation is really important because uh, what we learn in athletics and putting you know putting in the miles and getting out there and doing the work when we don't necessarily want to um, will will you know carry over to all the other areas of our lives you know and, and life is precious it's very important and uh, time is extremely um, man times times you can't you can't put any money on it so we're, we're all here for you know we're not here that for that long so while we're here we really have to uh, you know, put in put in the hard work and and live happy. And I really like those types of topics as well. And helping people really uh, zero in on what they want out of life, and to stay focused and, and to get results. So, uh, with that, I'll end and have a great afternoon, great evening, and a great morning wherever you are in the world. And I'll talk to you next time.